Welcome to PAA8's Provider Orientation. This training session is for new providers or potential providers of Passport and Older Americans Act funded services within Buckeye Hills Regional Council's eight county region. This training is being recorded on June 30th, 2020 and is based off of the information available to us at this time. This presentation is not intended to take place of any rules regulated by the Ohio Department of Aging. The purpose of this presentation is to highlight specific requirements and provide technical assistance to our provider network. Next, we would like to introduce you to our agency. Buckeye Hills Regional Council is a council of governments dedicated to improving the lives of residents in Southeast Ohio. By working collaboratively with elected officials across our eight county region, we grow strong communities through our five divisions, aging and disability, community development, mapping and data, population health, and transportation planning. Since 1974, Buckeye Hills has served the region as one of Ohio's 12 area agencies on aging. The mission of our aging and disability programs is to advocate for and educate older adults, people with disabilities, and their caregivers. When applying to become a long-term care certified provider, you will contract with Buckeye Hills to provide services and are responsible for understanding and keeping updated on the rules and regulations governing those services. Buckeye Hills serves Region 8 of the Area Agencies on Aging in Ohio and includes the following counties, Athens, Hawking, Meigs, Monroe, Morgan, Noble, Perry, and Washington. When applying to provide services, we will request that you identify which of the eight counties you wish to serve. We will also verify you have staff in those counties to provide services. The Provider Relations Team at Buckeye Hills can be reached Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Our contact information can be found in the Provider section of our website. If you would like to send us an email and require a quick response, please send it to providercertification at buckeyehills.org. Some staff members may not always be available and we want to be sure to provide feedback as soon as possible. The provider certification email is shared within our department and is monitored frequently during normal business hours. You are welcome to send emails to our individual accounts, but please keep in mind we may be out of the office conducting site reviews or on leave. Always feel free to call us if you have questions. If you are submitting documentation for our review, we prefer email or mail. Faxing multiple pages does not always guarantee transmission of all of the pages you submit. All provider types are required to apply online through the Ohio Department of Aging's website in order to provide passport services. Depending on the type of service you wish to provide, most Older Americans Act providers are required to participate in our agency's RFP process. This is a public process posted in multiple media outlets, allowing a provider to submit a proposal bid for Buckeye Hills to review. There is also caregiver funding available through Older Americans Act. At times, Buckeye Hills will reach out to providers, asking if they have an interest in providing caregiver services. 
With either of these situations, the Provider Relations staff provides instructions about the certification process. For both payer sources, the first step in the certification process is to read and understand the conditions of participation and service requirements for which you are seeking certification. Again, the certification process for passport services starts with submission of your application and all required documents through ODA's website. ODA will notify our office when the application process is complete. We will then contact you to set up a pre-certification review at your business site. Once we determine you are in compliance with OAC regulations, we will recommend certification to ODA. After that, a contract will be sent to you for signature. This presentation does not include all rules and regulations governing Passport and Older Americans Act services and is not intended to replace the rules that are currently in effect. With that said, we would like to take some time to highlight a few important requirements and provide technical assistance to help with meeting those requirements. The Ohio Department of Aging's website has an abundance of information for service providers. Please see the Provider section of our website for links to specific topics relevant to you and to the services you provide. Please take time to sign up for rule updates on ODA's website. As stated in the previous slide, our website has a direct link for your convenience. Please remember it is your responsibility to become familiar and to remain current with the rules and regulations governing Passport and Older Americans Act. Ohio Administrative Code requires providers to notify PAA-8 of any changes of contact information. It is imperative to notify our agency as soon as possible as any of these changes could potentially affect individual services. The provider section of our website includes a fillable office location information form. We ask that if you have any changes that require PAA-8 notification, please complete this form and email to us at providercertification at buckeyehills.org in order for us to take the necessary steps in updating your information. If you are unable to access the form on our website, please contact us. Passport and Older Americans Act regulations require service providers notify PAA-8 case managers within one business day of becoming aware of any significant change that may affect an individual's service needs including one or more of the following. The provider does not provide an authorized service at the time or for the period of time authorized by ODA's designee. The individual moves to another address. The individual's repeated refusal of services. There is a significant change in the individual's physical, mental, or emotional status, environment, or safety. For Older Americans Act services that are not case managed by our clinical staff, this does not apply. Our Passport clinical staff has developed a communication sheet for our providers to utilize when reporting missed or reduced services. Please refer to the Provider section of our website for a fillable version of this form and instructions on its use. For any other significant change, we recommend that you call the case manager and discuss this concern directly. 
please be sure to maintain documentation of all correspondence with the individual and the case manager for your records. Anytime you send an email, if you do not have an encryption software, please only use individual initials and unique identifier. If you are replying to an email from our staff, you are covered by our agency's encryption system. Please be sure to follow all confidentiality and HIPAA regulations with any means of communication. If you are unable to find this information on our website, please let us know. The Program Manager for Older Americans Act Title III Services at PAA-8 is the point of contact for all case managed services at this time. Please be sure to maintain documentation of all correspondence with the individual and the Program Manager for your records. Anytime you send an email, if you do not have an encryption software, please only use individual initials and unique identifier. If you are replying to an email from our staff, you are covered by our agency's encryption system. Please be sure to follow all confidentiality and HIPAA regulations with any means of communication. Contact information for the program manager will be provided during the referral process. Passport and Older Americans Act providers are to follow criminal record check requirements identified in Ohio Administrative Code 173-9. Please review the provider section of our website for more information regarding these requirements, as well as a recorded presentation to assist you. These regulations can be confusing, and we encourage you to reach out to us with any questions you may have. As ODA's designee, Buckeye Hills is required to conduct structural compliance reviews of all contracted service providers. Although we are responsible to ensure your compliance to regulations, we make every effort to ensure this process is as seamless as possible for all involved. We value the partnership of our service providers and are appreciative of all you do for the individuals in our region. As part of the certification process, a pre-certification review will be conducted as previously discussed. Once you start providing services and are receiving payment, PAA-8 typically schedules a technical assistance review as follow-up to the pre-certification review to ensure compliance and to guide new providers in following regulations. Your next review will be scheduled annually or biennially. Most services require an annual review and will be scheduled as previously discussed. However, there are some services that only require a biennial review. These services include personal emergency response system, home maintenance and chore, home medical equipment and supplies, home modification, non-emergency medical and non-medical transportation. During the annual or biennial review, we will conduct a unit of service or billing audit to ensure no billing errors or fraudulent activity has occurred. If multiple billing errors are identified, PAA-8 may exercise the right to complete a unit of service review as follow-up to ensure the issues have been rectified. An event-based review typically occurs when PAA-8 provider relations staff are made aware of an incident involving an individual and a service provider. An expansion review is completed when a provider who is certified in another PAA region requests to provide services in PAA-8's eight-county region. 
for providers who do not have office locations within our eight county region, follow up unit of service reviews and event based reviews, PAA 8 will conduct a desk review in lieu of a site re review. This means PAA 8 will request specific documentation to be submitted to us for our review instead of making a site visit to review the documents. All of these reviews will be announced and you will receive a formal letter explaining what documentation to have ready prior to our arrival or to submit to us for review. The last type of structural compliance review is an unannounced visit. PAA 8 or ODA reserve the right to conduct an unannounced visit if there is reason to believe an individual's health or safety may be affected by services being provided by you or an employee of your agency. For announced reviews taking place at your business location, PAA 8 will contact you by phone to schedule a date and time for our staff to come to your site. We will make every attempt to schedule our visits as they are convenient for you and your staff, but please know at times we are limited with the timelines ODA sets for us to complete these reviews. Once a date is set, our office will send a secure email to you that will include a formal announcement letter. This will be sent no later than two weeks prior to your scheduled review. One business day prior to your scheduled review, our staff will send a secure email that will include a list of individuals that will be a part of the review. We ask that you have your policies, procedures, individual records, employee records, including background check and roster, and all other required documents identified in the formal letter ready prior to our arrival. We ask that a member of your administrative or management staff clear their schedule for the date of the review to allow time to answer questions or obtain documents. For announced desk reviews, our staff will send a secure email to you that will include a formal announcement letter. This letter will include all requests for documentation, individual names, review period, and due date to submit documentation to us for review. Conferences will be held by phone and or email throughout the review process. If alternative arrangements need to be made, we ask that you reach out to us as soon as possible. If a structural compliance review is completed and there are no violations to the Ohio Administrative Code identified by PAA 8 staff, an exit conference will be held either in person during an on-site review or by phone and or email during a desk review. A formal compliance letter will be sent to you by secure email and by regular mail for your records. For Older Americans Act providers, if any violation is identified, it is called a finding. An exit conference is held where PAA 8 staff will discuss the violations and explain next steps. A formal findings summary letter will be sent to you by secure email and regular mail requesting a written plan of correction and or evidence of compliance. The due dates will be identified in the letter. Once the findings are satisfied, PAA 8 will send you a formal lift letter by secure email and by regular mail for your records. For passport providers, if any violation is identified that does not pose a threat to the health or safety of an individual, 
it is referred to as a finding. An exit conference is held where PAA-8 staff will discuss the violations and explain next steps. A formal findings summary letter will be sent to you by secure email and regular mail requesting a written plan of correction and or evidence of compliance. The due date for submission will be 60 days from the date of the formal letter. Once the findings are satisfied, PAA 8 will send you a formal findings lift letter by secure email and by regular mail for your records. For passport providers, if any violation is identified that poses a threat to the health or safety of an individual, it is referred to as a disciplinary action. An exit conference is held where PAA 8 staff will discuss the violations and explain next steps. A formal disciplinary action letter will be sent to you by secure email and regular mail requesting a written plan of correction and or evidence of compliance. The due date for submission will be seven days from the date of the formal letter. Once the disciplinary actions are satisfied, PAA 8 will send you a formal lift letter by secure email and by regular mail for your records. When submitting a plan of correction and or evidence of compliance, it is important to pay close attention to the due date on your formal letter. If you anticipate a delay in submitting some or all of the requested documentation, you must contact us immediately to discuss alternatives. We prefer that you submit documentation to us by secure email or by regular mail. The ways you submit documentation will also be identified on the letter. You can also hand deliver to our office, but please remember to ask for a receipt from our receptionist. Again, if you do not have an encryption software, you do have the option of replying to an email from our provider relations staff to be covered by our agency's encryption software. If you can, please refrain from submitting documentation by fax as pages get lost in transmission. Referrals are based on individual choice. If there is no preference, a blanket referral is sent to providers requesting acceptance. When our assessment team enrolls an individual in the passport waiver, they facilitate the individual's informed choice by providing the individual a list of contracted providers to choose from. If the individual does not have a preference of providers, our clinical staff will then fax a blanket referral to all providers certified to provide a particular service for the county the individual resides. Instructions are included on the form. Providers have 24 hours to respond, either accepting or declining the referral. Simply find the name of your agency, circle it, write yes or no, and fax the form back to us. After all of the blanket referrals are returned, if more than one agency accepts, there is a rotating list of who receives award of referral, which is distributed evenly so every agency has a chance to receive referrals. Keep in mind, the rotating lists are kept by each of our eight counties. As a courtesy, if there were multiple acceptances, our clinical staff will fax a follow-up to referral paper to inform each agency that did not receive the referral and that another agency has been chosen. 
If there are no responses to a blanket referral, our clinical staff calls each agency to see if they are able to accept the referral. So we do ask that even if you cannot accept the referral, that you fax the form back to us and write no to save our clinical staff from multiple phone calls and follow up. For Case Managed Older Americans Act Title III services, the program manager will ask the caregiver of the individual if they have a choice of providers from a list of contracted providers. The program manager will call the provider of choice. If the caregiver has no choice, or if the provider of choice is unable to accept, then the program manager will start making phone calls to the other contracted providers on the list until the referral is accepted. After verbal acceptance of the referral is obtained from the provider, the program manager will call the caregiver to let them know what agency has accepted the referral and provide an expected start date. The Caregiver Advocacy Program Provider Client Referral Form will be faxed to you after these steps are taken. All documentation should be retained in the individual's file according to record retention regulations outlined in the Ohio Administrative Code. As a certified long-term care provider, you must have case manager authorization in order to provide all passport and certain Older Americans Act services. When an individual enrolls onto the passport waiver, a service plan adjustment or at the individual's annual reassessment completed by the case manager, our clinical staff will send you a copy of the individual's service schedule. The service schedule includes all services authorized by the case manager, the PIM service plan dates, as well as the date the form was updated. Also, you will find the case manager's name and contact information and the case manager's determination regarding the individual's supervision needs. The supervision need is a very important element to pay close attention to. If an individual requires 24-hour care or supervision, your staff must work even more diligently to ensure coverage if you have a call-off. Furthermore, timely communication with the case manager is imperative to ensure the health and safety of the individual. The initial and all subsequent service schedules are to be maintained on the record and are subject to review during structural compliance reviews. Here is an example of the Care Summaries Guideline form. This form is included with the service schedule and outlines the specific tasks the individual requires assistance with. The highlighted section entitled Provider Alerts addresses specific times needed for services, extra provider monitoring, if the individual has difficulty with signature, and designated emergency contact. Typically, any potential concerns will be addressed by the case manager upon referral and you will be made aware of ahead of time. Again, this document should be retained in the individual's record according to record retention requirements outlined in the conditions of participation. The last form that is sent to you along with the service schedule is called Case Manager Assignment Sheet for Providers. The highlighted area shows how the case manager authorized service verification. One of three options will be authorized. Number one, the individual is capable of providing signature, 
either handwritten or electronic. Number two, the individual is not capable of verifying services, why they are not capable, and who is authorized to verify services on the individual's behalf. Number three, the individual is capable of verifying services but is not able to provide full signature, why they are not able to provide full signature, and how the individual is authorized to verify services either by initials, stamp, or mark. As always, maintain this authorization in the individual's record. This document will be requested for review during structural compliance reviews. Along with the Caregiver Advocacy Program Provider Client Referral Form, the program manager will also send the Caregiver Advocacy Program Service Guidelines Checklist. This form shows the PCA or Homemaker's Aid Supervisor what tasks the caregiver or individual require assistance with. Please utilize this form when completing your initial aid activity plan. The program manager will also fax the Caregiver Advocacy Program Service Authorization. This form is the actual authorization and includes the hours authorized and the effective dates. Again, these forms should be retained in the individual's record according to record retention regulations. The last form you will receive during the referral process is a formal letter explaining the authorization of services. Reach out to the program manager with any questions you may have. Electronic Visit Verification, or EVV, is a requirement under the 21st Century Cures Act a federal law passed in December of 2016. Under the 21st Century Cures Act, states must implement an electronic system to verify certain home and community-based services were delivered in order to continue receiving federal financial support towards the cost of those services. EVV requirements apply to both agency and non-agency providers. The Ohio Department of Medicaid is providing the Sandata EVV system at no cost to providers or individuals receiving services. Non-agency providers must use the Sandata system. Agency providers can choose to use the Sandata system or a certified alternative EVV system. Alternative EVV systems must comply with all technical specifications and business rules and complete a certification process with Sandata before going into production. Neither ODM nor Sandata are responsible for any costs related to the development, certification, or use of an alternative EVV system. Phase 1 included all Medicaid, personal care, and home health services. Phase 2 included Passport and MyCare Ohio services and began in August of 2019. Those services included waiver nursing, personal care, and home care attendant. Phase 3 will include participant-directed services and is expected to be implemented in September 2020. Here you will find some general contact information regarding EVV. For additional information, please refer to the provider section of our website. During the certification process, our agency requests that you complete a W-9 
and a direct deposit authorization form. This information is forwarded to our fiscal department. Once you are certified by the Ohio Department of Aging, you will work with the fiscal department to set up an account in the appropriate system. When you start billing, it is imperative that you submit billing based on the timesheets and not the service authorization. If you do not have proof of service, you do not meet eligibility requirements to bill. For any billing questions, please contact our fiscal department. We will be sure to provide you with the contact information for our fiscal department during the pre-certification process. Due to federal regulations, some Older Americans Act or Title III providers are required to input information into the WellSky computer system. If you have questions regarding this process, please contact our Program Development Coordinator. Currently, our agency utilizes a paper Excel billing form for the Title III-B and Title III-C providers. The form is customized based on county and service. New Older Americans Act or Title III providers are given an overview of the billing requirements by our fiscal staff. The Ohio Department of Aging uses two formats for providers to submit billing for services, Electronic Data Interchange, EDI, and Direct Data Entry, DDE. Please refer to the Provider section of our website for additional information and links to assist you. Our fiscal staff is always there to help as well. As stated during the opening of this presentation, this training session follows along with the rules that are currently in effect as of June 30, 2020, the date this presentation was recorded. It is not intended to take priority over current rules, but is to serve as a helpful guide. We thank you for your participation in this presentation. Our hope is that we have provided you valuable information to better assist you in following program requirements. Please reach out to our staff with any questions you may have. And as always, we thank you for the care you provide for the individuals in our region.